Hi everyone, I'm Shane Stevenson, you know where, from the Buffalo Naval Park. And for today's installment of 28 and 28, and we are halfway through, unbelievably, hope you've been enjoying the series. We have two more live sessions uh, coming up for the rest of February, and uh, you're also going to see a lot more of the ships and uh, our three vessels. Uh, but for today's video, we are doing a comparison with uh, the USS Cod. So I'll call this Ladies of Lake Erie. Uh, we're in Buffalo, they're in Cleveland. Uh, and so I'm going to run through their histories a little bit uh, during World War II and post-World War II. Uh, and this is actually going to be a slideshow, like a PowerPoint presentation. All right, so you'll see the slides and hear me uh, talking over it. And um, all right, let's begin. So here's our title slide to the USS Cod and USS Croker, The Ladies of Lake Erie. I tell you, I stayed up all night thinking of that title. So what we're looking at here is the, those important dates from the USS Cod SS-224. You're looking at a, a laid down date of 21st July 1942. She was launched 21st March 1943. Commissioned 21st, wow, the 21st. I'm just noticing that. Everything's the 21st of June 1943. She was constructed at the Electric Boat Company, which if you're fans of submarines, you know, Groton, New London, Connecticut. For her World War II sinking, she had to 12 total vessels, totaling about 27,000 tons. She, had, she was awarded seven battle stars for seven war patrols. So every war patrol was deemed successful. Uh, by by the Pacific Subforce and the U.S. Navy. Now what you see here is the same information for the USS Croker SS 246. Uh, you've seen both the badges uh, for the Cod and the Croker. Uh, her laid down date was 1st of April 43, launched 19 December 1943, commissioned 21st April 1944. So really exactly uh, 10 months after the COD. Now going into the reports and the records, she was constructed at the same spot in uh, Groton, Connecticut uh, at the Electric Boat Company, but it appears by now the name had shifted to the General Dynamics Electric Boat Company. So I found that quite interesting. Maybe there was a merger in those 10 months. So for the Croker sinking, she had 11, totaling 20,000 tons. She was awarded three battle stars, with a total of six war patrols where, with the battle stars, three were deemed successful. She was also awarded a Navy unit commendation, uh, as I've talked about in other videos, for her first war patrol. So for, really, ideally, in terms of time and resources, I was really interested in making or having an interactive map being created. So one of the cool things about uh, looking at the war patrols of any submarine from World War II, I, I haven't looked at the records from any sub in service today, but from World War II, they always take a latitude and longitude um, reading at noon. And those are listed in those war patrols. So if you had the time and the resources, and certainly the, the technology, I don't know if there's a technology out there, but you would be able to map out on a globe where they were and when. I mean, you could do it probably by hand, but... I'd much rather use it uh, data and in digital form. So I would have loved to have seen, you know, their lines crisscrossing and which times. But for this one, you'll see the patrol areas. Uh, I was able to go into the Dictionary of American Naval Fighting Ships, which is a standard for us in the museum world. Uh, and I was able to compare their war patrols, and I found that they shared these four areas. So the space was the same. I don't believe the timing was the same. Uh, but the South China Sea, the East China Sea, 
uh, around the coasts of Indochina and the Luzon Straits and the Sea of Luzon. Those areas the croaker and the cod shared in space, probably not in time. I also found interesting that the first port uh, that the cod uh, reported to was in Fremantle, Australia, while the first port Croker reported to was Pearl Harbor. So here's the sinkings for the USS Cod, again from the Dictionary of American Naval Fighting Ships and other resources online. Don't worry everybody, I'm not going to butcher any of these names, uh, but you got you know, some merchant ships, you got some sampans, you got some junks, uh, you know, a lot of merchant vessels, there was a destroyer there. But probably, she's most well known for the Dutch submarine O-19. So that had become stranded on a reef during the COD's seventh and last war patrol. They rescued the crew and destroyed the submarine so it could not be used by the enemy. And it's known as the only international sub-to-sub -sub rescue in history. So that's something that uh, the crew of the COD was very proud of. And for today, uh, the volunteers and workers in Cleveland, uh, that's an important story to tell. So now you're just looking at a, a few of the pictures of the ships that uh, the USS COD sank. There's the destroyer, the Kerukawa, Kerukaya. You have the landing ship, number 129. That's an example of the landing ship, though. That's not the actual ship. Uh, and then you have the Shoshai Maru, which was the mer merchant vessel. Now here's a pretty famous picture of O-19, the Dutch submarine that the Cod had rescued and destroyed. Uh, and if you take a look on the right-hand side, you will see right above the 2s in the 224, you will see O-19 with a martini glass. So the story is that they rescued, they, again, they were finishing their 7th War Patrol. They uh, went back, they had a gathering, and during that gathering is when they got word that uh, the Japanese had surrendered. So they were able to ratchet up the party a little bit, for uh, a lack of a better phrase, uh, and it turned into a much larger celebration. And so the USS Cod honored... Uh, that get-together with the martini glass with the O-19 uh, on her battle flag and scoreboard. So these are the sinkings of the USS Croker. Again, she sank 11 for about 20,000 tons. Uh, her most famous would have been the cruiser Nagara, which was the first in her class. So there was a Nagara-class uh, cruiser in the Imperial Japanese Navy. You'll see the submarine chasers, you'll see a bunch of maroos, which are merchant vessels, uh, two coastal oilers that I think were about 500 tons each, and two sampans junks. Again, like the cod, we'll show some pictures. All right, the Shansho Maru in the uh, lower right was one of the oilers. There's the cruiser Nagara while she was in service in the lower left, and you'll see the submarine chaser and the Taito Maru. Now this is one of our most famous photos here at the Buffalo Naval Park. This is the cruiser Nagara after she was torpedoed uh, on the starboard side in the stern. And you will see on the right hand side our current battle flag which is painted on the conning tower. Now, a lot of times we get questions about uh, the kangaroo. What does the kangaroo mean? Um, and I like to tell a joke, but I won't do that here. So what that means is they were ported in Fremantle, uh, not for their first patrol, like the cod was, uh, but for her for three, four, five, and six for her war patrols. So this, she was home ported in Fremantle four times. Uh, her first war patrol, she left from Pearl Harbor. Her second war patrol, she left from Midway. The three, four, five, and six were all from Fremantle. So that was a way of them honoring the uh, their time in Australia. For her post-war, for their post-war services, uh, the USS.
Cod and the USS Croker. This is where they really diverge. Uh, you'll see here for the USS Cod, they were both put in the reserves in 1946. Uh, and from 1951 to 1954, the USS Cod participated in NATO operations in the Atlantic and the Caribbean. The Cod was decommissioned a second time in 1954 and was immediately transported to Cleveland uh, as a training vessel for the reservists. In 1971, she was stricken from the Naval Register, and by that time she was an IXSS, an unidentified or uncategorized un uh, submarine. And in 1976, she opened for tourists in Cleveland, Ohio. For the USS Croker, again, put in the reserve fleet in 1946. Uh, from 1951 to 1953, she was a school ship in New London and Groton, uh, where she went through then the conversion to the hunter-killer submarine and she was brought back into service in 1954. So that's the most drastic thing that people see when they visit the Cod and the Croker, is just her appearance. So they're the same original Gato class together, but, uh, you know, after her conversion uh, here in Buffalo, uh, not in Buffalo, but uh, for the Croker, her conversion, she looks a lot different with that SSK conversion. All right, so she participated in NATO operations in the Atlantic and North Atlantic, around England, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Suez Canal. So with the submarines uh, from Russia, America was really caught unaware. That whiskey class that they created after uh, World War II, there's about 270 of them, if I get my numbers right. And so what they did was they took uh, six Gatos and Baleos, uh, maybe seven Baleos, six Gatos, and converted them using the SSK or Guppy conversions. All right, so the Guppy conversions are different than SSK. And when I first started here, they were saying, oh, she's a Guppy converted boat. Well, no, she really isn't. She's an SSK hunter-killer boat. All right, but she does have a Guppy sub, uh, subsail. All right, so that's interesting. But everything on the deck and below decks was the SSK conversion. All right, so she's, after her time, again, she was uh, stricken from the Naval Register in 1971 as, again, the IXSS, unclassified submarine. And she served as a privately owned museum ship in, from 1977 to 1987 in Connecticut, in Groton, Connecticut. And that's so interesting, she was privately owned. There was no entity. She was bought by a single individual who just threw open the deck hatches and, you know, just opened it to the public. Uh, but the Navy clawed back the boat due to negligence. There was, uh, you know, a tree growing out of the deck, things like that. <laughs> so she came to Buffalo in 1988. They put it back uh, on the market, so to speak to see if there was another naval uh, park that would be interested. We jumped at the chance, and she arrived in 1988, and she was put in for repairs for all of that year, and she was brought uh, to the public in 1989. Alright, so as I was mentioning, certainly the conning towers are so much different. Uh, there are no deck guns on the Croker anymore, like you still have on the uh, Cod. For her forward torpedo tubes, uh, the COD still has all six, but because of the BQR-4 array during her SSK conversion that was added to the bow of the Croker, they converted from six torpedo tubes down to four. Because right, the array was moved to the bow to minimize the echo from the engines. All right, so you'll see the croakers from the booklet of general plans from 1954. On the top of the picture, you'll see, uh, you know, that BQR-4A array. So her bow is much less sleek, and it's a little more bulbous. But that's where all of the um, that's where all of the sonar was moved. And I've noticed when I visited the COD that her hydrophone was an earlier version, so we do have the BQ uh, 
uh, BQR-3A hydrophone, which is much larger than what the COD has. So we hope you enjoyed this little look at the COD, and again, I really would love to get that interactive map. You can see the yellow line for the COD, or a blue line, and you can lay it out by month, or by, uh, yeah, I'd say by month, something like that, or by patrol, and to see where they crisscrossed, uh, and, um, but again... I don't have the technology for that or the resources to do that. So, uh, hope you enjoy this video. As always, leave comments. I certainly have really enjoyed the interaction with everybody. Uh, and subscribe, ring the bell, all that stuff. Pass it around to your friends. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow.